All right, guys, welcome back for episode number 12 of our series where we are creating an entire app using Firebase, Flutter, and Block. And today we are creating the post model. So let's jump right into it. So remember in the last video, we've created the post screen. So when we click on this floating action button in the home screen, we are redirected here where we have our text field right there where we can enter a post, hello, that's gonna be a post and you can just click on this button right there and we want to be able to send it to uh, our database. So the goal today is to only create our post model and then we'll create as well our post block. So let's go ahead and do just that. So you want to navigate under packages and remember it's a bit overkill for this project, but it's just to give you an idea of how you should organize your code if you were taking on a more uh, a bigger project. So I'm separating the post repository to the user repository. It's overkill for today, but let's just to go ahead with it. So we've created all of those files during the app structure um, uh, episode uh, that you will find uh, in the playlist of this series. So we want to navigate under models and under entities. And here we have our two class, our post class and our post entity class. So what are our classes uh, are gonna look like? So we'll basically have a string which is gonna be the post ID, that's for sure, okay? Uh, we'll have as well uh, another string which will be the post itself, all right? Makes sense. And we want to as well have the, maybe the date time, a uh, date time which would be created at okay and like lastly we want to have well the user that created the post so we're gonna import my user but here you'd say uh, that he can't import my user which is actually the my user class that we've created so at in the same model that we've did inside our main level perspect the yaml file we want to import a custom repository to our Perspect the YAML file on our post repository. So we want to do that right here and say that, well, it's not the same, not real the same path because it's only going backwards one and to user repository. So we're gonna go ahead and save that and post.dart now. If we try to import uh, our um, my user, it doesn't work so far. Uh, but let's go ahead and try to import again. Yes, we can import user repository and here everything works perfect. So to save time, I'm going to navigate under user repository, source, model, and base myself on the my user uh, class that we've created. So basically, I'm going to copy all of the class that we have right here and inside the posts.dart, I'm going to paste it right there. Path. Everything is pasted. So do you, now we have to replace my user with post because we're talking with post right here, not my user here. It's not my user, it's post. Uh, here it's post, sorry, up post. Post right here as well. For the two entity, it's gonna be post entity. It's gonna be post entity as well here, as well as here. And here is not gonna be my user. It's gonna be, sorry, it's gonna be up, let's close that, it's gonna be post. And we are pretty much done for this. So now we have to replace actually our uh, parameters with what we want. So we don't have ID, but we have post ID. So let's replace all the ID with the post ID inside this file. Uh, so it can work perfectly up. Let's go ahead and do just that. You have a faster way to do so. I will perhaps make a video on the shortcuts that you have on VS Code so you can actually go faster to uh, implement implement those uh, changes. Uh, but let's finish that. So targeting all the emails now because we don't have an email because we're taking, remember, the entire user class, okay? So two more, come on. So create that, create that, it's gonna be that. So we're gonna have a problem with created that because it's a it's the date time and, um, and uh, well, I, we can't be a string for the empty, so uh, for the empty method. So we are gonna have to deal with that. So I'm just replacing everything and we'll deal with the, the problems later on. So here, picture, replacing with my user, up. 
it's almost done picture picture and here as well well we are done perfect except here i've screwed it up it's not it's like this perfect so now uh, the only thing we have to say here, if it's with our copy with method, it's not a string created that it would be a date time. Uh, it's not a string my user, it's my user. And here for my user for the empty method, we want to say my user dot empty. And for the date time, we're just going to say date time dot now. Okay, perfect. And we're going to require the my user, this user as well. Uh, and we are pretty much done. So you have some errors right here and you have some errors right there as well, but we don't care really about that. Oh, we can delete that. Um, you have some errors for the post entity. Uh, well, it's very easy. You can just import entities uh, and that will work perfectly. Okay, but now we have to create our actual, actual post entity class, okay? So in the same spirit, we're just gonna take our my user entity class that we've already created, okay? And we are just gonna base ourselves on that to create our, uh, our, uh, our post entity class. So remember here in the post class, so we have those parameters, our constructor, our empty method, our copy with method, uh, if it's empty or if it's not empty, okay? Uh, and then we have a to entity method and a from entity method. So from entity would be from Firestore and to entity to go to Firestore, okay? We're gonna have to modify that a little bit later on, but let's go ahead and uh, create our post entity. So we wanna take the parameters that we have here on the post class and paste them onto our post entity, okay? So we need to import user repository as well here and replace my user entity with post entity uh, everywhere inside the file, which is not much. Uh, now that it's done, we want to actually replace our fields parameter, our class parameters with what we have. So we have a post ID. So let's replace ID everywhere inside the file with uh, post ID. Okay, that's, that's it. Now we are replacing the post parameter with uh, the email, so we don't need the email, we're just gonna replace the post. And you can just go ahead and do the same as I am doing right now to save some time. Create that, okay, let's replace name with create that. Up, up, up and up. And lastly, my user, we are replacing the picture field with my user. And you'd see we have some errors popping up, that's normal, that's all right. Um, but uh, let's deal with them. So here, let's deal first with my user that we're gonna say that is required, okay? And here, so we have the to document method and this is where it's a bit, it's a bit tricky because here we have a string, we have a, a, a string as well, here a date, a date time. So all of that, Firebase is able to handle that. So he's gonna transform your date time to a timestamp, okay? But he can do it on its own. But here, he won't be able to do it on its own because we have a my user object. And if we try to push a, an object to Firebase uh, storage, he's gonna say, well, you can't do that. But luckily, if we access the method to entity dot to document, we are parsing our user object to a my user object, my user entity object, sorry, and then accessing the to document method that transform our my user object to a map string uh, dynamic here object uh, 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 parameter and that will be accepted with uh, Firebase. So that's perfect. So from document we have some errors because here we don't want to parse that as a string but we actually want to say something a little bit different. So we want to say my user dot from entity okay now access my user entity dot from document and here we want to say that the document is going to be the field that it's called my user. Sorry, up oh, my user. And we can remove all of that. And just like that, we're pretty good because here, uh, what it's going to give us fire, Firebase storage, uh, Firebase Firestore, sorry, is going to take us a map string dynamic, which is representing our user, but we don't want to deal with the map. We want to deal with uh, my user. So we are just using this method that we've created inside the, the, the user repository to be able to do just that. And here, 
it's uh, as well a little bit different because we don't want to say that it's going to be a string it's going to be a date time okay so it's going to be a date time but here we are getting actually from firebase um from firebase not um uh, a date time we are getting um a timestamp and this we can't have this we can't have we want to actually have a timestamp so how would you do that we just need to parse it okay so you can just say date time the parse and say just like this perfect so uh, we have another error right here maybe because it's constant yeah okay let's just make it not constant and here inside that our post dot dart we have a, just a little error because i forgot to replace that but with that done we have created our entire class uh, that will be used for uh, uh, actually creating a post so now it's pretty good so now what we can do is actually go into our screen so let me close that up for you and uh, collapse everything. So what you want to say first is navigate to the Perspect YAML file on the main level and copy that. And under that, uh, say that it's not going to be user repository, but it's going to be post repository and importing the post repository that we have. Okay. Oh, well, yeah, that was good, but I deleted something. Yes, sorry. Up. Oh, let me do that again. Up. Oh not user repository but post repository and we are getting it from here perfect let me run a pub get everything works perfectly and now if we want to test out everything we just navigate and through the lib folder screen home post screen okay and here we can say right so uh, we can create a new post right so here you see from post repository the one we've created post is equal post dot empty perfect that's pretty good and here we're not going to make our post screen stateless we're going to make it stateful okay and perhaps we can take that and make it a little bit more here and instant instead of instantiating it right here we can access the init state and instantiate our post inside the init state method right here and say that this post is going to be late all right so if we save that up and refresh everything navigate to the home screen we'll have our post and let me just show you inside the console uh, what we have so let me clear that up for you and say log post dot to string and import developers if i save this it's going to be an instance of post which is very good and because we didn't implement it the uh, on the two string method but we can do it right now navigate to post repository source post entity let's just take this two string method and navigate to models post.dart and at the very bottom of it just implement the post post method uh, for two string not post rep post entity save that up uh, and you'd see now I'm refreshing we have a post with ID which is null which is makes sense here because if we navigate to empty the ID would be null okay then the post would be null as well it's created that well right now but we can as well uh, modify that when we actually click on the button to send it to the to the database and our user is actually equal to empty okay but here we can say that it's equal to empty but now we can as well say that post dot my user is equal to context dot read say my user block remember dot date dot user okay perfect and perhaps add that and now if we save that and actually rebuild the screen because we need to be doing that let me clear that up for you so it's more clear they're gonna say well you need to actually give us a, a, a my user block right here right makes sense because we're not providing any uh, my user block to this screen but what we can say here in the home screen we can actually because in the home screen we have access to this my user uh, my user block we can add a, a, a parameter to our post screen which is going to be a my user okay my user and we're going to required it right here so say this dot my user inside the constructor we can import user repository and make that final 
And now here, instead of calling context.read everything, we're just gonna call widget.myUser. And so now in the home screen, we have a little error because we actually need to import our, um, our um, my user, but here we can just say that it's gonna be context.read my user block dot state dot user. And if we save that up and actually rebuilt everything, let's see if we've made the difference. So let me close that up for you and click here on navigate. Couldn't find the my user block. Okay, so what's the problem right here? Let me see what we have in the app view. So we have our sign in block provider for our app view here, which is going to be my user block. Okay. Uh, and so why can't he access this? Uh, let me see. Let me see my user block and it's in app view. I'm going to check that up guys. I'll be back with you in just a second. All right, guys, uh, makes sense, makes total sense because we actually provide this block provider uh, before in our app view.dart to the home screen. But here in the home, the home screen, the block builder that we're using is under the app bar right here uh, for using my user block, okay? And not under our uh, scaffold itself, okay? So we might want to actually move that up onto not only the uh, title for the app bar, but for the entire stuff. But what we can do as well is only wrapping up our uh, here floating action button to a, a, a block builder, which is gonna be of that my user block, okay? It's just repeating the same uh, block here uh, in order to not have to return entire, uh, entire pieces of, of the UI, okay? So we're very specific, but you can wrap your entire screen with uh, your entire scaffold with them block uh, builder of type my user block and just return a different scaffold if we are loading it. So perhaps you want to return a loading screen, but let's make it simple right here. So we're going to take the same parameter. So if the status is equal to success to getting our user, we want to return our uh, floating action button that actually redirects to creating a post. Otherwise else we just want to return uh, uh, we just want to return, let's perhaps take, take the same, take the same, but instead of on press here, we're just gonna make that null. So it's not actually pressable. Okay. So save that up and add constant. And perhaps here, instead of, of, of add, we're going to take, say clear. So if I'm refreshing everything, perhaps it's going to work. It's still not working. Let me rebuild the entire app and come back to you guys. My bad, it was just right here. Instead, inside our post screen, instead of accessing context.read dot uh, my user block, uh, just accessed the state dot user here. So that's exactly what we're doing. So now if you navigate to the post screen, you'd see, perhaps let me expand that, that we have our post, which is, uh, null, null, uh, now, and we have good our user right here, which has our ID, our email, our name, and as well as our profile picture. So if you want to Im implement some kind of other UI here using the, the, um, the information of the user, you can go ahead and do just that right there using the picture or whatnot. So that's pretty much done for today's video, guys. Uh, it was uh, it was really nice. So now the next step is going to be to actually send the post to um, to Firebase, and for that we are going to do that in the next video where we are going to well create the operation to send it to Cloud Firestore, and then we are closing up on the end of this series because then we'll be feeding the UI with the posts that we have stored inside our database. And that, that's going to be uh, pretty much it for, uh, for this series. So don't forget to subscribe and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.